yes, yes. Welcome to Conversations of the Heart. It's your boy T. Till. Yeah. Season 2, episode 24. It's going to be a good one, y'all. Rock with it. So t- today, today, we're going to have a special guest on here. Friend of the show, friend of the show, um, at Jeffrey Joel. We're gonna be talking fourth quarter finances. Um, I think that's a such a very important topic, um, especially because we are in the fourth quarter. We're in, in the very beginning of the fourth quarter, headed to the end of the year. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things uh, about money, about planning, about uh, excuse me, uh, about finishing the fourth quarter strong, about planning for the, the brand new year, and everything else. Um, and he's he's somebody that's gonna really break it down for us in a different way. So, um, and here he is right now, about to get this conversation of of the heart started. What up, Trey? What up? Ah, <laughs> my man, my my, come on now. Oh man, you all, you you. Oh, you have to do it like that. Okay, okay. I appreciate the support, brother. I appreciate the oh, support. Can you see me in my right? Can y'all see me with my my hat? You know what I'm saying? Can you? <laughs> I can't see nobody rocking this flag yet on here, so I want to make sure everybody can see me. There's only one person who who rocked the swag before. All right, all right. you know who it was. Ah, uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, Stoner has to come through with the swag. <laughs> she always wins. That's the problem. Yeah, she, 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 always she never loses. She doesn't lose. She never loses. She's a winner, no, bro. You know, <laughs> and, and speaking of winners, um, you know, that's why I always want to have you on the show, bro, because you're a winner, you know, just in everything in life. You know what I'm saying? And at Debt Free Joel is not just a name. It's what you really are. You know what I'm saying? Be you know, I just want everybody to be clear about that. You know what I'm saying? And it takes a lot of discipline to get where you are and not a lot of people are anywhere near debt free. You know what I'm saying? So definitely salute to you. But I do want see so you gotta surprise me on this thing. So now, you know, I have something for you. You know, um so we normally just kind of just get right into the meat of you know, of what we do. But I wanna do it a little bit different this time because you've been a friend of the show. And we've done a lot of money management series, financial literacy, literacy series. Like we've done a lot of stuff for, when it comes to finances. Yeah. But what I want people to know is who you are, because that doesn't get highlighted enough. Your journey through school, right? Like, because there could be somebody out there right now that wants to get the CFA, yeah. and I feel like we're robbing them a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Of of the journey. You know what I'm saying? So just tell us a little bit about your credentials. And your journey towards um, where you're at today on an educational level, and just also just in, in life, because just because you get an education doesn't mean that you're gonna apply it. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 just talk to us a little bit about your journey, sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can start from the beginning, right? I mean, you know, at least after high school, right? We went to high school together. So, you know, St. John's Prep. Shout out to everybody who went there. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you talk about Stony Brook, you talk about, you know, applied mathematics and statistics. That was my major there. Um, I was actually going mm-hmm. to medicine, to be honest with you. That was the, the ultimate mm-hmm. goal, right? I took the, um, the MCATs three. I mean, I took the MCATs twice, studied for it three times. I didn't take it the third time because my love for it started to, to go away for it. Um, but I always liked math. I always liked money. I always liked the ability to count, right? Because it's definitive. You really can't argue with somebody when the one plus one equals two, no matter what they tell you now, it's always going to equal the same mm-hmm. number. So after I graduated from Stony Brook University, I started working and I worked at a security firm, not like a security, like investments. I'm talking about security guards, right? I was in like mm-hmm. accounting, uh, department. And I worked under a guy who was the VP of finance. I said, ooh, that, that seems cool. Um, so I went and I said, you know what, maybe I should do my MBA in finance. So speed that up. I went to St. John's University to do my MBA in finance. Um, mm-hmm. After I was done with my MBA in finance, I came out during the housing crash. 
Mm. So when I came out during the housing crash and everybody was losing their mind because everybody, you know, was doing whatever they need to do with finance and everything was going through, the, you know, through the floor, basically. Nobody wanted to touch me. So I mm -hmm. got a job um, as a compliance consultant at ACA Compliance Group, which it was, was before Ashton Partner, mm -hmm. before they got bought out. And then while I was there, they kept talking about this thing called the CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst Designation. They said it's not that they can give you outside of a PhD. I said, okay, how hard is it going to be? That took me five years to get. Right. That that was, mm. that's that's a very difficult and hard uh, designation to get. So after I was done with that, then I started to study personal finance. Now all this journey that I just described to you has nothing to do with the personal finance journey because in school they don't teach you about personal finance you have to learn on your own mm. it's not their fault that they mm -hmm. to teach you about finance you're supposed to learn on your own so that's what i did and i started to take what i already learned and mm -hmm. what i started to learn and that's where you see me now um and then and you know i was always helping people behind the scenes with finances and then last year we connected um you know as a way to try to give back during the the social unrest that happened so a lot of people don't realize that a lot of this page specifically this my journey started because that was my way to give back charity right my way mm -hmm. of, instead of me going outside and protesting let me do what i do best which is try to give game as well as i could so that's what mm -hmm. i and then you know i blame you for this so <laughs> now we hit <laughs> yeah yeah you know it was only right, though, because it's funny talking about last year, you know, last year when me and you were talking, cheers, cheers, sir. Um, you know, you know, what I mean, um, so well, last year we were talking about uh, various different things, you know, a lot of different things was going on at once, you know, the civil unrest, you know, what I mean, just a lot of stuff, even just personally with, with, just with the both of us, you know, what I'm saying. And when we got to talking and, you know, this, this, then this platform, you know, came, this came about like. I was like, yo, I got to have Joel on this joint. I said, like, like it's got to happen, you know. Um, and I'm so glad, you know, um, that that we did that, too. It's just because now, like, yo, yo, you on yesterday's price. It's not today's price for Joel. <laughs> like, he, like, he went to a different atmosphere. Like, he went, he went all the way up, you know what I'm saying? And to see what you're doing with your platform and to see, you know what I'm saying, with your YouTube this this page, you know what I'm saying, has taken off and it's blessing a lot of people, man. So I just really wanted people to just, to just get an insight of just who you are, you know what I'm saying, because it's important, you know what I'm saying, that people un understand the journey. And, like, he does charity for real, you know what I'm saying? Like, so just be clear, like, he does a lot of stuff up behind the scenes, so, you know what I'm saying, don't ever doubt his in integrity. Um, so now let's uh, let's get to it. So it's 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 the fourth quarter. Um, shout shout out to my bro. Oh, shout out to my brother. He said, "What up, Joel?" Yeah, I'm. Uh, so, so it's it's the fourth quarter, right? So when it comes to fourth quarter goals and fourth quarter finances, what would be one of the like the major a major um, thing that you would tell? You know, what I'm saying somebody who's saying, "Man, you know, it's, it's the fourth quarter because guess what? We have the holidays coming up." Yep. Right. Um. Well, a couple of different holidays, you know what I'm saying? And and then we have the new year, right? So how so what would you say? Like how would you close out the year strong yeah. uh, with your finances in, in, in the fourth quarter? So let's just get this out the way right now. Get on a budget. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody hates when I say mm -hmm. that. That's applicable no matter what I live I do, no matter what presentation I do. Get your ass on a budget. You need to be on a budget. I know you don't like being on a budget, but get on a budget. The only reason I say that is because no matter what I say from this point on, you're not going to know what you can do for the rest of the year if you don't know where your money's going, right? So your budget is is basically you telling your money where to go and before your money tells you where to stay, right? You guys heard me say that before, so I'm going to keep saying that all over again. Make sure you're on the uh -huh. budget. Before you do anything for the fourth quarter, make sure you actually write down your bills. Now, let's get uh -huh. specifics. The first thing I would do personally is because of – Everything that's happening with inflation right now, because all the prices are rising. All you need to do is go to the gas station, the grocery store, electronics, go try to buy something right now. All prices are inflated. You know, in fact, mm -hmm. my favorite bar just increased their prices. OK, mm -hmm. so here's my nugget for you guys. Why don't you start your Christmas shopping now? 
because mm. you know that there's supply chain issues going into the, the end of the year. Let me explain. The reason why we have inflation from last year is because all of us has been sitting on our asses, basically not spending since last year. And then once the floodgates opened because of the vaccines and everything like that, everybody started spending money. The problem was everybody spent money, but there wasn't enough supply that caused inflation. You add on what's happening in China right now, also with the fact that they're pulling back themselves and trying to restrict certain things. You add on the fact that um, you also have unemployment issues, right? Because people aren't really working the same way. So you have, you know, not the same type of products and the same amount of products that are being produced. You're running into a supply crunch. Now think about mm. it. I want everybody here to think about this. What do you think is gonna happen at the end of the year when we all start buying the same thing at the same time? Mm -hmm. The prices are yep. going. So the best mm -hmm. thing you can do right now is start to buy your Christmas gifts. Get it out the way now because if you wait, all the PlayStations, all the video games, all the clothes, don't, don't get me wrong, they know that they're going to have limited supply. They're going to jack up the prices because they're going to have a bunch of people trying to get everything at the same time. Start your Christmas shopping now so that you don't get the inflated prices later. Okay. Oh, so my brother said, oh, Joel meets the culture where they are, which is something I'm learning to do. Big shout out to him for that. There's levels and steps to this. Love what you do, fam. So, yeah. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. So, what, like, what you're doing in the culture, like, it's just amazing. And I always tell you that, you know what I'm saying? I'll, and I'm always going to continue to tell, that, tell you that, you know what I'm saying? So, that. So, start, so start, start the holiday shopping early. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Right? All right. So, you get that out the way. Now, now what's next? Right. The second thing I think that you probably want to do is if you haven't already reviewed your credit scores and, and your credit reports, you should. What do I mean by that? Every single year, you should be re reviewing your credit report, right? Your credit report and your credit score are two different things. Your credit score is mm -hmm. a numerical number that one of the three bureaus are going to use to determine whether or not they can loan you money. But your credit report has everything on there in terms of all the debt you've collected and everything like that, you know, and your, your payments and, you know, how good you've been. So in the United States, at least, you're able to review your credit report for free once a year from all three bureaus. I'm willing to bet everybody within the sound of my voice is the majority of them have not reviewed their credit reports this year. So during the fourth quarter, why don't you review them? Um, there's a website, it's called annual, I think I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Annualcreditreport.com. Okay. So the name mm -hmm. is annualcreditreport.com. What you do is you go on that website and for free, they're going to pull up all three credit bureaus at the same time. If you want, you can pull up all three of them at the same time and then have them provide you everything on the report. Now, in addition to that, some of your banks, some of your credit cards, because of all the nonsense that happened last year, are able to provide your credit report monthly if you want. So you also have that option as well. So you can get it for free now if you want. You can also mm -hmm. look at your credit cards and see if they provide it to you for free. Um, your bank may provide it for you for free. But that is a free thing that you should be fully taking advantage of. Look at your credit mm -hmm. scores. But most importantly, look at your credit report to see what's on there to make sure if you need to dispute anything. Dope. So now as, as we enter into the new year, you know, I think we, well, a lot of us, you know, plan for the new year, yeah. right? And there's business plans, there's, you know, academic with stuff with work, like personal things that we're planning out um, for the year 2022, right? But on the financial side, let's, leave, uh, let's use you. When do you start planning, right, financially for 2022? Truthfully? Or the next year, or just the next year? My fiscal year is from September to October. Or no, sorry, from, from October to September. So my, technically, my new year just happened, right? I write my goals mm -hmm. of the year. Now, why do I do that? There's mm -hmm. no special reason for it. One day I decided, let me write my goals. It was in the middle of September, and I said, all right, I'm just going mm -hmm. to do that once a year. So that's mm -hmm. what it is for me. I usually, I don't wait until the new year. My goals started already, right? right? So I already wrote mm -hmm. all my goals down. But for a lot of you who want to do the new year, and I have, I'm one of the people who don't mind when people want to say new year, new me. Go for it. Run with it. Do whatever. It yeah. I don't care. Go to the gym. Do whatever. I, I'm always going to be a proponent of somebody trying to change for the better. 
right? Mm -hmm. They can fail 30 years in a row, but that one year that they get it right, all hell's going to break, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to try to start planning your goals, I say start now. The reason right. why is because the last thing you want to do is try to plan your goals after you already spent everything during Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, right? New Year's is January 1st. If you start planning your goals on January 2nd, you're already one day behind. Mm. So you have financial goals for next year. Some of you may want to buy a house. Some of you may want to buy a car. Some of you may be getting married. Some of you may be, you know, wanting to purchase something or save up for something. Some of you may want to max out your 401k, whatever it is, start articulating on paper or on your phone or whatever you want to do, what your goals are and make sure that you can stomach them. A lot of times we reach for, there's, there's an expression in HR called stretch goals, right? You stretch further mm. than you feel like you don't <laughs> push your goal easily. Well, the problem right. is, a lot of us shoot for goals that we have no business doing, right? Like I want to run from Queens right. to Brooklyn in five minutes. No, right? It right. has to be reasonable. They call them smart goals, for example, right? They have to be measurable. They have to be specified. So start looking at your goals now financially. And here's the one thing people don't like when I say it. If you're in a relationship, your goals are your spouse's goals and your spouse's goals are your goals. So don't start mm -hmm. making goals for next year if you haven't consulted with your spouse, because at the end of the day, that's your partner at the end of the day to, to get to that goal, right? You're only as good as your weakest link. So if I had to do any financial goals for right now, I would, or for next year, I would start looking at it now. So, so I said, Walmart is already about to do afterpay <laughs> and put people more in debt. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of that, like, you know, like there's different options now um, to split your payments and to, you know, make it more quote unquote, you know, obviously um, convenient. So like if something is $80 or whatever the case is, then they'll say, oh, like you could pay $20 every four weeks or something like that, right? Or oh, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I have been seeing a lot of that and a lot of different vendors um, are providing that that service now. Um, it's more, it's kind of like a layaway now, but just digital, right? Um, exactly. You know, which a lot of people back in the days, you know, did use layaway. Um, they would still put some <laughs> like in September and then pay it off like a whole year, twelve months later. Yep. Um, so, so now, but the difference with that though is they couldn't tie it to like a loan, right? It wasn't like a loan. It was just you're actually just you went to the store. Jacket, my leather jacket, you know, back in the day, you were the Wilsons. I date yeah. myself. You know what I'm saying? And you go get, you see that fly leather jacket, and you're like, oh man, that, that was like 250 All right, you know what I mean? I'm going to put like 25 on it and come back, and, you know what I mean? And come back each month. But they didn't report anything to the credit bureaus, no matter what happened, right? But I think now with this stuff, like, like Afterpay, and there's a bunch of different other ones out there now, it's like if you default on that payment, you know, I think from what I understand, they can absolutely now attach that to your credit score and, and, and put you in default and stuff like that for something that's, you know, $100 or $150 and stuff like well, that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then think about it this way, right? So for those of you that are, are hearing about the afterpay issues and, and, and what's being offered, if it looks too good to be true, then mm -hmm. probably too good to be true, right? So they're selling mm -hmm. it in such a way that you're able to buy something right. affordable over time like you said is what we used to call layaway right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here's the issue certain not every afterpay is made the same so some of them may charge you interest after a certain amount of days right, Which, right. if it's interest that means you're incurring more debt right because you owe mm -hmm. um the other thing to consider as well is what happens if you don't pay it off in the specified time that they had they're going to jack the rates up on you again Right. Mm -hmm. The other thing to consider, too, is this. Why are they offering this? Right. Think about it. Why? Why are companies offering it? Because they know that they're going to entice you to buy. Mm. Right. If they say, look, you don't got to pay me now. You could pay me over the next five months. You're more enticed to buy, to consume, to spend. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the key. The key is that they want you to spend your money. Remember what I just said earlier. We all sat home last year. A lot of us and didn't spend any money co co compared to what we did in 2019, right? right? The reason why was because everything was shut down. So they looked at the statistics and said, the United States has one of the highest savings rates they've ever had, ever. Our generation had one of the highest saving rates ever, 
And they said, all that money needs to come to our pockets. So they opened mm. the floodgates. All these stores opened the floodgates. Every time I go to my email, Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever, sending me something, one day sale, right? They want the money you do. Yeah. So that's why they're doing this. So you can take advantage of those things as long as they're not charging you interest, as long as you're not sitting there buying something you shouldn't buy. But that's something I mentioned on a YouTube video I did earlier. Don't be the person two years from now that they talk about where did all the savings go, right? Don't be that person because a lot of people are now diving into their savings and then in a couple months, they're going to have no savings like they did before, neuroemergency funds, and they're right back into the rat race. Mm -hmm. and, as, and as you were talking, the one thing I was thinking about was, you know, with the afterpay and the company and, and, and the services like that, is like you said about budget, right? So if you're on a budget, let, uh, let's just say, and, you know, it's like, what, 20 bucks every four weeks or whatever the case is, let's just something, something, something small. And if you didn't budget for that, that extra 20 or whatever it is, like three weeks from now, yeah. if you're not really in the right place, let's just say, um, that 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it is, that's going to automatically debit from your account, Sometimes you might forget. Yep. You know, pe pe people are human, they're busy, they have kids, whatever the case is, and yep. they might forget. And then it's like, and all of a sudden you're like, yo, wow, yo, why is my account $50 short? I got to do this, I got to do that. And it's just like, oh, yep. that, that's why. Yeah. Right? Um, so, that, so that's something to be really, um, to look at too, you know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to, to these type of things. Um, and it's and it's enticing, like it's, it's like you said, because it's a lot of the vendors and a lot of these stores are using these things. So a lot of people might start doing that, like going Christmas shopping, and they might have, now now they they might have four or five different afterpays, right? Like for a few different weeks because it's cheaper on the first week. Oh, put your down payment here or whatever the case is. Now, like three weeks later, you might have boom, 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 like payment after payment after payment after payment, right? And then I, and I was like, yo, I didn't really. I didn't budget for that, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I didn't really get that. So that's something that people have to be careful with too, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're using um, the afterpay like that and, and the services like that. So, so when it comes to the fourth quarter, what's some of the pitfalls, right, that people should avoid or can avoid um, as they end the year uh, financially? Not preparing for Christmas. That would be my first one, right? Not preparing for it. Let me ask you something. We all know when Christmas comes. Every last one of us knows when Christmas comes. It's December 25th. That has been Christmas. It's not going to change. It hasn't changed for God knows how many years. We all know Christmas is coming, but yet we all do the same thing around Christmas time. We wonder where the hell all our money went. We're wondering why we're paying these extravagant prices, and nobody is ever happy as, as to what they spend during Christmas time, right? Because we don't. Mm. Right. We don't like to plan. We don't like we plan at work. We plan with our kids. We plan with our wife. We plan with our husband, our girlfriends, whatever it is. The last thing you want to do now is plan more with your money. But the problem is, is that was that's the one that hurts even the most. Right. So my thing is going into the fourth quarter, you want to prepare yourself. You know, Christmas is coming. If you're one of the people who have to buy gifts for people, start budgeting for it now. So one of the things I think I would recommend to people is start a sinking fund. Right. Um, a sinking fund basically is this putting money aside for something you're going to have to pay for in the future. So what do I mean by that? If you're the type of person that says, I'm going to have to spend probably 500 at Christmas, right? By the time you include the wife, the kids, people, random people, whatever it is, I got to spend 500. Well, you're in October now, right? So if you saved about a buck 50 this month and then you save the buck 50 next month, going into December, you save $300. All you got to do is come up with two. Mm. right? So now you're preparing for it so that the, the hit doesn't feel as bad. That's what you're looking to do. So that would be my first pitfall is prepare for Christmas. If you're one of the people who have to buy gifts, prepare for it. Oh, I see Stana just stepped in the room. Stana, we were just talking about you, how you never lose. Never. Shout out to you, though. You never I lose. I was first. I thought I was first with the hat, but apparently somebody, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, she always got to get it first. You know what I'm saying? She don't ever lose, man. But shout out to both of y'all for, for always showing me the love and support, man. Thank you. Um, So, like Brian said, uh, I 
I plan my 2022 goals now in 2021 because we need to start structuring budgets and financial goals now for 2022. He's right. Yep. Because mm -hmm. if you cross the new year and you start planning your goals, you're already behind by a day. And then you got to agree. Mm. With goals. And then if you have a wife and kids or whatever, you got to get them on the same page. So you might as well start thinking about your, your goals now for 2022 versus waiting until December or waiting until January to do it. Um, it, it's the same way people, when it comes to money, it, it's really about, you know, emotions, but it's also about planning. That's, that's mm -hmm. a lot that comes with it. So when it comes to a budget, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes, there are some people who could be scared of budgets. There are some people who don't like budgets. There are some people, you know, they just could be just be funny with budgets, right? I mean, it is what it is. Um, people are human, so they have different things, right? Yeah, so yeah. if, if, if somebody came up to you and said, Joe, like, how do I even like start my budget? Like I have... I have kids, I, 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 I have you know, a bunch of bills, like where do you even begin to start? Because for a lot of people mentally, that's just a tall, like it, it's like, oh man, like yep. I'm gonna need to sit here and sip on something before I even get started, right? Like it's not just something that everybody's like, oh, like this is great, like let's go do it right now, right? Like that's not the reality for a lot of people, right? So, um, so where do they start? If you want to start with a budget, if someone, and I get this question a lot, by the way, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, people have DM me or, or reached out to me and say, hey, man, you know, I want to be debt free. Where do I start? I say, you know, you got to start with your budget for sometimes you never hear from these people, right? Because mm -hmm. they hear you got to invest or something. Um, mm -hmm. When people come to me and tell me that, what I basically tell them is, look, you know how much you make, right? Mm -hmm. That's probably something you know. What you don't know is how much you spend. Okay, so take your bank balance from last year or from last month and look at your credit card statement and write down every single thing that you bought. Okay, write it down on a piece of paper, right? And try to add it up. And that's going to tell you approximately what you're spending every month, right? Now, you may have an odd month, right? So everybody who comes to me and says that they said, well, I just bought that randomly. I don't usually do that. And I don't usually do this. Okay, cool. But let's start with what you did, right? Because I can work with the facts of what you did versus what you think you're going to do. Okay? Yeah. That's, that's different, right? Every time Mary. somebody with a budget, they always leave stuff off. Let me just sneak it up on there. Let me just sneak it up on <laughs> Yeah, so I want everybody to understand this. When you do a budget for the first time with people, they put all the big items, the car payment, the mortgage, the rent, they put, you know, the big items because those are the ones that the ones that they remember. You know what each at your budget? It's not just those. It's the small things. Netflix, Amazon, the two gym memberships that you have because somehow you signed up for two different gyms. Um, <laughs> the, the amount of money you spend on Seamless, don't judge me. I just bought Seamless, right? The amount of that's, money that's you spend on the amount of money that you spend at a bar. You know why doing a budget so hard? Because all of us have been programmed to use our credit card. It's a lot harder to feel the pain when you swipe, right? That's why I always say use cash. But that's the first thing I always tell people. Look at prior month. The prior month is not going to lie to you as to what you did. It's going to show you your behavior, okay? It's going to, you're going to have your income. You're going to know what that is. Look at the prior month. Look at all your expenses. Add them up. And then subtract. Income. Minus expenses tells you what's left over. If you don't like that number, start going back and cutting through your expenses. Get rid of the double gym membership if you don't need it. Start figuring out why you have full insurance on the car that's 12 years old. I have done that, by the way. You may not need that, right? Look at things that you can cut back on so that you can get on the budget. And like I said, you tell your money where to go. And you can start paying yourself first. Mm -hmm. and, and that's good because it's so true, especially with the car stuff. Like sometimes... We have things for so long. We have policies for so long, sticking with one company, especially, you know, because the, that's the devil that we're used to. Kind of like relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. Different subject. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, um, and then it's like, yo, like, wait, wait, wait a second. Like, you mean to tell me I could save 60 bucks more a month by switching to, yeah. you know, I'm not going to say Geico because that's too cliche, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know, State Farm or whatever it is, like start shopping around because sometimes we have, we have um, things that we just had for so, for so long, that cell phone, you know, different cell phone stuff that we've had for 15 years. And 
there's other you know there's other people and services that can actually say yo I can cut that in half for you now instead of spending a a buck seventy a month for one phone right you know what I mean now you might could you know get that down to a hundred or eighty now that's a dog more you know freed up for, for you so that's one hundred percent true it's really looking at you know, it's not just looking, but also just looking to see where you can actually save. You know what I'm saying? I did that this year too with um, switch, switching my car insurance. Because I was like, yo, why am I, I was like, why am I paying this? Like, and I was like, I've had these guys since I was 17. Yeah. You know, so we're talking, I'm not, you know, we're talking a little bit of time. You know, I've been with them. So it's like, all right. So now, like, I went shopping around and then boom, save like a, a, an instant $65 a month. Yeah, think I'm just like, you know, like that makes, and I get more stuff. Yeah, so so think about <laughs> this, right? I'm as guilty as you. I love Geico. Geico never did me wrong, but I know I pay a premium mm -hmm. for Geico. For sure, pay a premium for Geico. Mm -hmm. No questions asked, right? But think about this. From a, a business perspective, they call you a sticky employee. What they mean by sticky is that at the end of the day, you're not going to move because the hassle of you moving is going to make you uncomfortable. That's why you stay with all, all right. Existing merchants, right? Merchants being the mm -hmm. place that you shop, right? We're yep. creatures of habit. We like to go to the same stores. We like to eat the same mm -hmm. food. I like to go to the right. same bar. I like to wear my hats, right? Like it is mm -hmm. what it is. We do the same thing over and over again. And the and the people who sell you stuff, they know that. They know it. Mm -hmm. So they they say once we get them through the door, they can say, Oh, I'll give you free six months. Because they know after seven months, you're not gonna leave them. You're not gonna do it. Right. You're not going to do it. And it's it, nobody wants to deal with the hassle on Saturday morning going through their budget to figure out what they need to do. I don't like doing that. And I've been on the budget. OK, so I can I can tell people, frankly, yes, it does suck to do that. But in, in the end, if the goal for you, right, is to I want to max out my 401k. Well, you got to start looking around because last time I checked, max maxing out 401ks ain't easy. It could be the 403B. Mm -hmm. It could be an IRA, which is six grand. I don't care what it is. Putting money away, saving money. Everybody likes to invest money, but you ever notice when people invest money, they take it right back out because they don't like to keep it there, right? Mm -hmm. Like People have this, this understanding that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not going to keep going back and forth. And that's what happens. So in my instance, yes, go through every one of your expenses, which I have um, somewhere on my calendar, I got to call my cable company. I'm still one of the people who have cable. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody went online. Now, we can debate that at another time. Right? Yeah. Everybody went online, and now they're paying the same amount in cable, but whatever. But mm -hmm. these dudes jacked my, my joint $50 without me knowing for a couple months. I checked budgets, and I still didn't catch that. So if I didn't catch it, like, what are y'all missing? Right. That's right. why that's why you need to be on a budget. That's why your brother said it earlier. A budget doesn't mean you broke. It just means you're mm -hmm. telling money where to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny. You just mentioned um, maxing out your 401k. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you business. You already told it online. So I, so you already said it. Like you maxed out your 401k. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Respectful. It's a <laughs> humble brag. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, um, and you did it because you following your own steps. Yeah. You following your own advice, right? Each year, this is what you're doing to sacrifice so that you could, um, you know, max out your form. Okay. I think it was 20 G's or 19, 20 G's you maxed out, right? Yeah. It was like 19.5, I think. Yeah. It's around 20. It's cool. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> it's, hey man, it, you know, it is, <laughs> It is what it is, you know. I mean, we gotta round that up to twenty. Right. So you save 20, 20, 20 G's in, in your four hundred one k, and people might think that's a big number, but at the same time, it is a big number. But it didn't always start like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think people understand that. Like, sometimes pe people hear that and they go, "Oh, I want to as well." But honestly, you gotta start from some. You gotta start somewhere. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not it's not just jumping from. Oh, I heard Joe maxed out twenty, so. Now I'm gonna go max out the twenty because it just there's levels to it. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just not that easy to do. No. Um it's not hell, it's not even easy to do five or eight. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's it's not easy. Actually, one of the goals, yeah, one of the goals that, you know, in terms of um what you should be doing for the fourth quarter that I had written down was check your 401k, check your retirement mm -hmm. account. Right? 
Um, mm -hmm. I'll get, let me give you guys some statistics real quick. 40% of people don't know what's in their 401k right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think another one is 40% of Hispanics, blacks and Hispanics, um, have no retirement at all. Okay. It's worse with women, by the way, just for the record, it's worse with women. 25% of people have less than $25,000 in their retirement. And that's not just because people just started working. Okay. So that's why I think it's important to understand the power of your retirement account and why during the fourth quarter, just check it. You don't got to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have the login information for Christ's sake, right? Make sure you know what you're invested in. Make sure you're actually doing something with it and try to increase it once a year. At one point, I wasn't maxing it out. Shout out to my boy, Dave. He's never going to see this video. But Dave Pierre is the one who put me on and started like doing things with his 401k 10 years ago. And I was like, what are you doing? Yada, yada, yada. And like, I didn't get it. I didn't understand what he was, what he was saying until I started to do the numbers myself, right? Here's, here's a fun fact for everybody. And I think we talked about it before on a, on a prior live. The majority of people in this country, the United States, whether you like it or not, the majority of people in the United States who are millionaires are millionaires from their 401k, the majority. Not from houses, not from buying and selling stocks every day, not from flipping Bitcoin, not from any of that. The majority of people in this country who are millionaires are millionaires from their 401k. Why? Because you compound over time and you can't touch it. Because you've been thinking about it. You put money away for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Right? Think about it. You put money away for 30 years and it's been earning an average of 7% every year. And you've done mm -hmm. it with it. Some people forgot about it. So that's why, yeah, maxing out your 401k is cool. But I don't care what you do. At least match, get the employer match, right? So if your employer mm -hmm. matches you a dollar for dollar up to like 3 or 3% 3 or 4%, do that, right? Because that's free money. So during the fourth quarter, one of the things you should do is look at your 401k and see, you know, are you at least – making it to the amount that you match your um, your employer. And then think about next year, why don't figure out a way to raise it by 1%. And every single year, raise it by 1% until you start maxing. Because once you start to really max and stuff like that, that's when you start to really compound from a net worth perspective. Mm. So I think Denver Consulting said that 500 is a cool dinner. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that big <laughs> That's what that is. That's Vegas. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, Vegas, you know, we just, it's a love affair, you know, Vegas. But we're going to leave that up. We're going to leave that alone, you know what I'm saying? Vegas is an amazing place, you know. But, yeah, it can run you a little bit, you know, depending on, on what you're doing and who, and who you're doing it with. Yeah. You know, um, but so, but also, speaking of Vegas, if that's in your budget, you know, plan early for it. So you're not, you know, um, trying to, you know, just cram everything in. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, so, so, but sometimes I feel like people feel like they may not. You know what it is? It, and maybe I'm wrong. And, and maybe that you and you can tell me this. But sometimes I feel like, especially now with this gen gen generation or even ours to a point, like, it's like saving for something makes you feel weird. It makes you feel like you don't got it like that, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. like, like, if you, because I saw, like, a comment, right? I was online, I think it was two days ago, and a girl said, if you can't pay for it when I want to go, like, if you got if you say, oh, I got to wait until so-and-so, like, or, to, or or at a later date, then you're not for me. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, hey, like, it's not cool to, to, like, save for a vacation, right? And then be like, yo, I, I want to go on this and, you know, I want to go next year. So let me save from now. It's like, now, like, if you meet somebody and you don't have it like this, it's just like, ah, well, that's not the thing to do. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I see that a lot, though. You know what I'm saying? It, it, so, it's very societal, too. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's both men and women, by the way. Right? <laughs> oh, no, so, of course. <laughs> I'm just saying what I saw, like, you know what I'm saying, at that time. So <laughs> the biggest, I, I, it's I a see, business group. I see, I see, um, I see a lot of that sometimes with our society because we, especially as men, and we talked about this before, I think, too, where behavior, yeah. we, 
we want to be the ones that got to connect, right? We want the money. We want the girl yeah. we want the chain. We want the watches, right? We want everything. We want to feel like we ain't broke. You never want to go to another man and ask the man how to get to the money. You want to be the one to know how to get to the money, right? Right. You That's want to be the plug 24-7. You want to be the plug. That's just what it is. That's how we've been raised. However, let me help everybody out. The streets lied to you, man. That's all fake money. That shit ain't real. So for her, right, from her perspective, mm -hmm. she's probably bad. She probably could get any guy she wants. So why the hell should she deal with somebody and say, well, you know, wait for the next check for me to do it. She can find someone who's going to do it right now. See, the thing is, that's flash money, right? That's all flash, no cash. I know a lot of these people, right? They look rich on Instagram, but broke in real life. They get real quiet when certain people walk through the door, right? Because what happens is, is that they flash their money, right? So my money ain't flashed in front of you. You don't know what I got. I like it that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I like it that way. I don't want you to yeah. know what I got. But a lot of people mm -hmm. spend their money on themselves. They wear the jewelry. They go on these big trips. That's fine with them, right? But that ain't fine. Now, Joe, hold on, I got to stop because when you get dressed up, you look like money. But but continue. I, I, I just want to be clear. The when you get dressed up, you look like some money, Joe. I'm just saying. I've seen it firsthand. I'm just saying. The last suit I bought was like four years ago, fam. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been in a pandemic for two, so. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, saying, I was, I'm just saying. Yeah, but I'm still but, working. And but all. I know. Yeah, so but at the end of the day, you, 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 what you want to do is find someone, if you're single or, or even if you're in a relationship right now, find someone who doesn't have that mentality. Because guess what? Mm -hmm. That girl who's sitting there looking for a guy to spend all that money, that, that guy that's looking at a trick on a girl, 30 years from now, they're going to be broke as shit. And then they're going to be like, oh, well, the government needs to bail me out. Let me, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, a, I'm sorry to tell y'all, the government ain't bailing y'all out. All this stuff that you're seeing is going to catch up to us. So that would be my advice. People know not to come mm -hmm. with that stupid shit. Like, I just, it, it don't, <laughs> it just don't work with me. Mm -hmm. And especially yes. too, as you get older, you start to care mm -hmm. less. Like, I ain't, like, yeah. when we was younger, you try to do everything, right? Because you, you didn't have enough so you want to put everything on your wrist, on your neck, so that you can mm -hmm. show, right? My brother used to call it peacocking, right? You ever see a peacock when it spreads its, fle its feathers? Yeah. Dances in front of the mate. That's what it is. As you get older, you don't care about that. Somebody said it earlier, like, you move in silence, right? Like, carry a big stick, wall salt. Like, that's what it is. It's just, I, I want nothing to do with that, man, because that's a different mm -hmm. mentality. They don't know what to do with money. They think money is supposed to be spent. Mm-hmm. I think Fly Before Ty said, uh, the plug got a plug. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> that's a good one, too. The plug always got a plug, too. And I think that's where, speaking of that, that's kind of where what you just talked about as as far as us not wanting to, to ask or us not wanting to, you know, because we want to be the plug all the time. We want to be the that source, right, yeah. of all knowledge and, and information and the money and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but everybody learns from somebody. It's like, it's cool to learn in school, but it's not cool to learn from your fellow, you know what I mean? Like your, your fellow neighbor, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if it's in school, then, and you hear from a pro pro professor, then it's like, okay, no problem. But if it's your boy who has the information, it's like, nah, I can't ask him. Nah, nah, I'm good, you know what I'm saying? Because now he gonna think I'm broke, and then, uh, then now he gonna look at me funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just yeah. like that too. Don't think out how bad it is, right? The reason why we, especially as men, don't ask for help is because if I'm around Terrence and I'm doing what I got to do, you know, all, all the way that Terrence could just shut me down is like, yo, I told him how to do that. That's a fact. And that happens sometimes. Right? That happens, right? Once, once you do that with somebody as a guy, as a man, and you're dealing mm -hmm. with money at the end of the day, and then you're around another dude that puts you on a how to get to money, that's how they're going to offend you is to say, nah, mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it myself. Somebody put me on. And then guess what? In our society, everybody goes to that plug. Who, who's the one that put you on? I tell people all the time, the reason why I'm debt free is because of my best friend. You ask him right now, he'll tell you straight to your face, right? It is what it is. He don't got to brag. I tell it for him. But I have no problem doing that because that's my people's. He's never going to use that against me to try to get girls. Like, that's not his mentality. Right. You said right, of course. But at the end of the day, you said something important. Education doesn't have pride, mm -hmm. right? 
Like, you're the one that put me on to therapy. Mind you, I got to get that hat, right? But you're the one yeah. that put me on to therapy. My boy Jamil, never see this, this live. He's the one that also put me on to therapy. Boom, that makes right. sense, right? You're, I, mm -hmm. I cut you out every time I do a live with you. You're the reason why I'm doing this, right? Because it was you who put me on. So I don't have a problem getting information from people. There's an expression, right? The worst thing about a know-it-all is when they don't know it all. Fact. Right? That's the worst moment in life is when mm -hmm. a know-it-all doesn't know it. I have doesn't an alarm that goes off every day that says you don't know everything. Stay humble. Mm. I have an alarm that does that every day. I read 30-something books a year. I try to get my money right. I try to do everything. I try to learn as much as I can about finance. And at the end of the day, I'm still an idiot. <laughs> you still <laughs> <laughs> stay humble stay humble yeah you're right yeah no you're right i think uh Dem Denbury consulting said people want the plug for free though yeah i mean yeah i mean like for what it's worth i don't have a problem giving it um i mean that's what i mean that's what we've been doing and i think for, as the community i think sometimes you know i think that you should support small business and you should support your friends businesses and things and things and things like that, you know what I'm saying? But the things that you can't give away for, for free, I think that, you know, like we should. Like this right here that we're doing right now is free. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it can help people, right, in a different way. You know what I'm saying? And it could jumpstart somebody's thirst for 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 becoming debt free or getting out of debt or having a savings account or doing a budget. Whatever that is for that person, um, that's really you know what I'm saying? Why we do it. You know what I'm saying? But you're right. A, a lot of people do want to plug for, for free, right? But the mess up, the one thing I do have a problem with that is, but then they'll go somewhere else and that same information and and purchase, and right? The and, yeah. and invest, right? Um, so it's just tough, especially like within like your own community, um, just the things that, that you see. And, and, and it's frustrating. Um, because we should be supporting each other. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you said, like, we should all be giving each other safe spaces, you know what I'm saying? And knowledge, right? Safe spaces mentally, emotionally. And then also where it's like this, because I always say this with you, bro, like, in, in general, me and you have parted together down through the years. Yeah. We broke bread together. We've had some things together. We've had some good times together. Yeah. But also, the, uh, the other side to that is, yo, we, we can sit down and talk real game. Yes. We can sit down and talk about real life stuff. Yep. We have a safe space. We're both, we like to be macho men. Like, oh, we like to, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we can do both. You yep. know what I'm saying? But I think there's a lot of people that have people around them but that they only there for just the party. You know what I'm saying? The good times and talking about sports and women and, you know, stuff like that. And there's a place for that. Whatever, right? But, when it comes to talking about real life stuff, whether it be about finances, your mental health, emotional things, whatever that is, it's like, nah, we don't have any time for that because there's no safe space for that. Yeah, you're not feeding your ego. Right. That's what it comes down to as men. You're not feeding your ego. So you keep people around you as men to, to feed your ego, to feel good about yourself. My boy Greg mm -hmm. said one time, like, he was just like, yo, man, we need to create safe spaces because y'all going to get punched in the face. <laughs> y'all like, y'all too much with this shit. Like, we got to create safe spaces where people can be emotional because it's, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to lose people. People are going to have serious problems. But, you know, when you think about giving the game away, I mean, we joked about it a lot, but that was the yeah. on my page, right? Because I, I, I haven't charged anybody shit for a year. I haven't tried. I haven't done anything right. in terms of that. And try to so right. mention something like people and, and, and actually the Jewish community says this. If you actually look and they're right, what happens is when you give things away for free, people devalue it immediately. Yep. Because they think, well, it's for free, everybody should be doing it. So what they do is they go pay for something that's exactly the same information. Yep. Right. So if you look in like um if you look in the Old Testament, if you look at some of the Hebrew scriptures, if you look at some of that old writing, what they say is don't always give information away for free because people are not going to be um, understanding to it. They're not going to get it. Sometimes they have to put money up to be able to receive it. So my way of doing it was like, all right, just give it away for free. Have it there as a record so everybody can do it. But you're right. If you give something away for free, 
people automatically devalue it because they say if it's worth anything, you would have charged me. When you're trying to, right. have, it's it's my. And that's, it's and 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 that's and that's very 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 true, um, because and even when you give away stuff for discounted, you know, like or, or for discount, like. Then, then people say, "Well, does Ferrari give discounts?" No, because it, they don't have to because it's, it speaks for itself. And I'm just like, yeah. "All right, like you know." So there's there's always a fine line. But then when you start charging for things, a lot of times, especially within the community, yes. now people look at you sideways and just like, "Well, you know, the community needs this, and why and why are you charging?" You know what I'm saying? Like you should be doing this. So it's like a double edged sword. Yeah, no, we don't. You know, what I mean? we don't. We don't allow like so. When someone starts a business, they say, "Yo, let me get, let me get something for free. Let me get a discount." Yo, right? like yo. still think like you started your own thing, right? Like you started your own yeah. line, you started the hatch, you started everything. I'm pretty sure people. If you notice, I didn't hit you up for months because I was like, "All right, I gotta put in my budget to make sure I buy this, right?" Put right, right. Man, you see what I'm saying? So like, we have a we have a tendency to always look for the hookup. But we go yeah. out of our community to go support other people. There's a um, Dr. Claude Anderson mentioned this one time, and it's a it's a real thing. I want everybody to consider this. The majority of people who are watching are probably black. So if you live in a neighborhood that's predominantly black, what happens is every night your neighborhood goes bankrupt because mm -hmm. we don't bounce our dollar in our own neighborhood because we don't own mm -hmm. it. We go outside of our neighborhood and spend it in other neighborhoods. We do nothing for our neighborhood. Right. So when you have these black owned businesses and they're charging a premium because they don't have economies of scale, you get mad and then mm -hmm. you get mad about it. But then six months later, you're mad that the government isn't making it easier for black people. Right. Or minorities or for Hispanics mm -hmm. or for women. Right. Or for gays, like mm -hmm. whatever, whatever demographic you want to use, it, it's always we wish something was easier when we can do it ourselves. So if mm -hmm. there's one item, for example, in the fourth quarter that, you know, I was going to bring this up. But if you know this one item in the fourth quarter, be charitable. Mm -hmm. Go buy something from your friend that started their business. Go, mm -hmm. go do it, right? There's a bunch of teachers right now online that you know that are trying to you know, um, promote books and, and buy books for their classes. Go do that. Mm -hmm. Go buy, go give them $10 to go do that, right? This year, all those kids that went back to school, they got to go buy chocolates, donate money, right? Maybe those mm -hmm. kids help and, and save their own money and teach them about money, but go be charitable. But charity doesn't mean down and out and just going to church. I'm Catholic, so I do that. But that doesn't mean that. It means, right. oh, if you're cool with Terrence, go buy his hat. Don't ask mm -hmm. him for a fucking discount. Go buy it. Go buy something and let him put you onto the the, the company you told me about, where they make the, the, the candles and, you know, mm -hmm. all the, the suits and all that. Like, go support people that need the help right so they can also grow their businesses so their money can be used in the neighborhoods you live in i mean that's i do it all the time i think people i think it's a lack of understanding of small business too because when you think about it when a person starts their their small business or whatever the case is or they add on to an, to their business and they launch something and it's, it's, it's what it is. It's a small business. And, and they're like, well, Amazon does, doesn't charge me shipping. Um, I'm sorry. Um, you know how much Amazon is worth? You know how much the owner of Amazon is worth? Exactly. Right? Like, so if I'm charging $5 for shipping, like, you don't understand how things work. Right? Because especially when it comes to just certain things, like, let's just say, for like, drop shipping and stuff like that, like, it takes, it costs money to make a, a sweater. Right? It costs money to make a hoodie. Yeah. Right? And then now, if I now, on top of that, being charged from trying to make the hoodie, now, I now I got to eat now five or five to ten dollars in shipping. At this point, I'm I'm making a dollar or two. Like at that point, what's the point? At that point, there's no point in even being in business. That's that's not even smart business, You're right? Right? But there's like, oh well, I don't feel like paying for shipping, or I don't like, oh, I can't get a discount. Blah, blah, blah. All right, well, I give you the family friend discount too at 25% off, and then I eat the shipping. At this point, I could have just said, Hey, I'm gonna buy it myself and then just give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, and it's like, it's not about supporting people. You know what I'm saying? It's just about, oh, like, well, let me get this discount because I don't value it as much as I value Gucci or whatever the case is, right? And yeah. because that's the status symbol. You know what I'm saying? But then if you blow up or, or, if, you're, or if your brand takes off, they're going to be the first one there, too. Like, hey, what's up? 
Yeah. You know, you know, and it's just like, come on, man. Like, no, people, people, you know. don't realize, people don't realize. So here's an experiment for everybody that's watching. The next time you go buy something and it says $19.99 or $29.99 or $30, whatever you buy, ask yourself how much of a profit margin, right? How much profit are mm -hmm. they off of each sale? A lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize that if you go and buy a hat that's thirty dollars, that does not go to Terrence, right? Because nope. there's a cost. <laughs> yeah. There's a cost in in the merchandise that he's selling. There's shipping. There's taxes he has to pay. Everything like that. It's a sole proprietorship. God forbid you hired someone, right? Now you got to pay for people. So people don't realize they think the price that you pay is the profit that's not what it is it's the you know it's the it's the cost of goods sold the taxes the net income that value right we all learned the income sheet that's what it comes down to mm -hmm. that income right so we don't realize that but i think in the fourth quarter if you guys had any goal you want to do take some of your money and support your friends to have their own businesses there's so many people who created businesses during 2020 during covid I had people who created tote bags. I had people who started online, you know, therapy and, and, and online gear and, and all these different types of things. Go support those people because those are the, those are the businesses that are going to lift, you know, our community up, right? Those are the ones. And if, if you don't support those, then you're always going to keep supporting the Amazons and all that. And that's cool. But what are they doing mm -hmm. for your community? What are they doing for your people? Right. And... And that's and, and that's the biggest thing is it's how are we building our community, man? And and just for the record, you know, I, I think if anybody wants to learn any, any, anything about finance, personal finance, and things like that, hit up at that free Joe. But listen, invest in the man. You know what I'm saying? The man's been putting out so much work. You know what I'm saying? In this last year, it's it's unparalleled. You know what I'm saying? Just how much information he's putting out. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't just hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Just to just get from him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, invest in him too because he has bills too. You know what I'm saying? And he has a, a life too, but he does but, but what people don't understand. Making these YouTube videos takes time. Going on, on these lives takes time. Doing doing the editing afterwards takes takes time. Like, all of this stuff is time and effort. You know what I'm saying? And he's a finance coach. He's a guru. Like, who else would you want to learn from than somebody that looks like you that is in the position that you want to be? Yeah. It's simple. It's it's and and I think a lot of people. Um, well, for me personally, if y'all try to give me money, I probably tell you I would donate it, but don't tell Terrence. Um, but like, and we're gonna have to create a fund. Yeah, right. So, like, <laughs> I, I think I think I think the the important thing to realize though is that when you have your friends who are starting their businesses who are doing these things, understand that they're putting themselves out there. All these people who do things um, and start their businesses, man. Like I, I always tell people, I told Terrence this, the first time I did a live, my hand was shaking as I went to go and, and press, you know, to join because, you know, you can go out there and embarrass yourself. Terrence destroys you and it's like you just embarrass yourself in front of like 20, 30 people. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So when people put themselves out there, when they start their businesses, man, encourage them, support them, try to help them out. You know, part of your budget, in my opinion, should always be about charity. Use that money that month to, to help. And I think it's it's a beautiful thing. Yo, yo, listen, we're gonna put a pin in it. I hope that everybody um enjoyed the gems that this man always comes through with and he always blesses us with. You know what I'm saying, man? So I appreciate you, bro. Nah, I really do, man, because you're doing some amazing work, man. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanna highlight that for real, man. You know what I'm saying? I know you always say it, I give this journal away for free. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know. That's, you know, that's dope because it's for the community and it's for us. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just want to say thank you for that, you know. But please, like, if there's somebody out there that can't afford it, like, hire him. Like, hire him. Like, if, if you're one of those people who, who say, Listen, I want to pay for a service, don't go outside. Hire him. And 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 he'll give you the game. You know what I'm saying? And and he'll get you to where you need to be. For real. You know what I'm saying? I might have somebody to ask him. He asks about you, too. So, you know, I'll, you know, I will see and I'll put you on. You know what I'm saying? But um, listen, bro, thank you, bro. I appreciate you, man. You know, we're going to do this again. You know what I'm saying? So, hey. Anytime. Um, and my brother said, don't be afraid to increase your prices for the service that you pro provide. Like I told Joe, I, I said it earlier, yo, yesterday's price for Joel is not today. It's not today's price for my man. You know what I'm saying? He, he's about to go up. So, yo, book him, man. Yo, bro, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, King. Appreciate you, bro.
You got you got that hat? You got that hat? You got that hat? <laughs> y'all got My that? man, yo. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Thank y'all. All right, bro. All right, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peace. Yeah, and that's the wrap. Uh, another, another week. Um, next week we will be having fourth quarter finances part two with with uh, a great finance coach, coach Coach Britt, uh, plan of Plan Your One Life. It's going to be an amazing conversation for week number two of fourth quarter finances. Uh, she's dope and has a lot of content and a lot of information that she's going to share. Uh, tune in, appreciate y'all. Thank you. I appreciate all y'all support. And yeah, until next week.